Good evening and welcome to Your Money, Your Call. Joining us on the panel tonight, we have Roger Montgomery from rogermontgomery.com and Mark Moore. Good evening, Roger. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Good evening, Mark. Good evening. I'll start with you, Roger. I read sure. your article uh, this week on Queensland Rail. I know you've probably been asked it on, on some earlier shows. but no, I haven't I, actually, not yet. Oh, okay. Well, well, my question is, after reading the article, I uh, came away with you're not uh, necessarily positive or negative on, on the story. Uh, it, it was that the right way? Well, well let, me, let me say this. We don't know the numbers yet. We haven't seen the prospectus. Um, I've registered for it, um, you know, like most people. Um, but uh, the result of, you know, the result of uh, looking at the, at the numbers that are sort of filtering out now about the company um, is, that, is that the return on equity is going to be pretty low. You know, you're talking a 6% return on equity in 2012 after a two-year turnaround that's now in, in train, pardon the pun. Um, uh, and, but if you look at present numbers, you know, the, the return on equity is substantially lower, if not negative, so uh, on an after-tax basis. So, you know, it, capital intensive business, operating leverage is, is very, very high. Um, it has been in government ownership for a long time and it will improve as it comes out of government ownership. Um, but whether it becomes a CSL versus a Telstra, you know, the other big, you know, government sell, sell downs, um, or the Commonwealth Bank, you know, will depend on whether or not that turnaround gains any traction. Um, at the moment, what I do know is the return on equity is, is pretty low. It's going to be low for a while. I've looked at some US peers, um, Santa Fe, Burlington Northern Santa Fe in the United States, the, the rail company that Warren Buffett bought, it was generating a return on equity of about 13%. Um, so that's kind of the upside for it. Uh, but, you know, you really, in that float, you'd like to be buying at a discount to its equity. Okay, yeah, there, there are, um, it's very hard to compare, I guess, especially with the US railroad companies. But I guess on, uh, even from my comments earlier, it's probably a nice way to be able to look at a company which is taking royalties out of the mining industry, whether it be here in, uh, in Queensland on, or on the East Coast and also in Western Australia. So, Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, that's, the, the, there's no doubt the, the Queensland government is leveraging off the, the optimism that's around the coal and iron ore and the whole China story. Um, you know, that, that won't be without its own speed humps. You know, and so investors need to be mindful of that. OK, it's got, still got a couple of months ago. Good evening, ago. Mark. Oh, good evening, panel. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Um, I've got a little company, Link Energy, um, just about uh, breaking even on that one at the moment. Just wondering if any of you guys cover that. If you don't, maybe Asiano. OK, I think uh, we briefly, Link, Roger, and um, um, Asiano is probably a good one to match up because if you've had a look at the US peers, that probably fits in with looking well, at. Well, let's do Asiano first. I mean, that's the that's the easier one of the two because Link, you know, its history is pretty checkered yep. and you know, in terms of its profitability, not sure about that. And very um, topical at the moment with yeah, that, with clean sum rail. But you know, Asiano generates very very low rates of return on equity. Uh, it generates um, uh, it has a lot of debt, um, so two that's two negatives, uh, and it's trading at a substantial premium to its intrinsic value. In fact. Um, I estimate its intrinsic value at about 50, 50 cents or thereabouts, and it's trading at um, $1.64. Uh, so uh, three times its intrinsic value, lots of debt, low rate of return on equity. You know, I'm, I'm not quite sure whether or not this is an investment candidate for me. No, well, it's actually its, re it's return on equity is 4%. So you can get 6% at the bank easily. So why would you invest in it? Yes, yes, yeah, no, it might um, drop link because it probably falls into that category of a company which does have a lot of mo money in the bank but it's from selling off some coal tenants I think. Yeah look um, there's some expectations you know there's some expectations that its its history of loss making in the past has uh, is going to reverse um, but you know it's it you know I'm looking at its report its profits going back 10 <coughs> years and it's lost in 2002 8 million 2003 it lost a million 2004 lost a million 2005 2 million 2.8 3.3 4.2 42 million um, you know, so it's consistent. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, uh, you know, so you want to be fairly certain that they you know, that that's going to turn around. Um, and I just think, you know, from an investment perspective, there's safer businesses. There's businesses that are much more stable and have a demonstrated track record of success that you can invest in. Okay, thank you, Roger. I hope that answers your question. Well, thanks for taking my call. Um, just want the panel's view on QBE Insurance. It's recently pulled back from its recent highs of around 1840. Uh, just want to get the well Rogers' valuations on that, um, if it's cheap, and also um, Prima Bioma. Just a technical on that. Um, it's just an, a small emerging biotech with um, exciting potential. It's recently got US FDA approval a few days ago, and it's currently in its pivotal uh, trials, um, sitting on about 16 and a half mil in the bank. So they're fully funded for the rest of their trials. Just want to 
just get a technical on that. Seems to be forming a base, and um, it's had a few cracks at ten and a half and eleven. So yeah, what's the panel, panel's view on that? I think, I think Jason's given enough information on on the farmer there, but the yeah. QBEs were very topical ones. Had a bounce, uh, Roger. What? Well, I would I would say I would I would say Jason, um, maybe you missed it just when we came on the program. Um, neither of us are technical analysts. We don't look at charts, so um, I can't really comment on a technical basis. But what I can tell you is that um, Q, I can talk about QBE. QBE is um, <coughs> is trading at a discount to or, or at next year's valuation. It's at a premium to the current valuation. Um, but it's trading at next year's valuation. Um, the issue for QBE, however, is that it's been its intrinsic value has actually been declining um, for the last or well, since 2007. Um, so generally, I like businesses whose intrinsic value is going up, and, and QBE is, isn't that at the moment. It's it's one of the few companies in Australia that actually has a successful, uh, a very very successful um, acquisition strategy. But that's been driven by um, Franco Halloran, and and, uh, and he's going. So true, that's true. Uh, you know, if that's not rec. If you can't replicate that, you know that, that could be an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you for your question, Jason. Uh, next call on line, Sam. Sam from Mildura. What's your question tonight for the panel? Okay, so it was uh, just um, a quick one. I bought some ADX Energy, ADX Energy shares today on some information that I've been given. Um, I understand that they've got uh, some quite substantial and positive announcements that are uh, set to be released in the next uh, fortnight or so. I'm just wondering if you guys have got any opinion on the um, stock itself. Uh, Sam, I'd be very, very careful. Um, it sounds like you're in possession of inside information, so um, we won't say where you're from, um, uh, or that might have already been done. But yeah, if you're privy to information about you know companies making announcements before they actually make announcements, be very, very careful. Um, you shouldn't deal in the stock if you've if you've been given that information. Um, it's a company that, uh, as far as I can tell, hasn't made any money. So the way I value businesses that make no money, pretty easy, uh, and that's zero. Ted, what's your question for the panel? Well, I, I, I'm really interested in your opinions on uh, Austin Engineering, ANG. ANG, this is uh, one that's had a good couple of years, probably shows uh, up on the market. You'd want for invest, investing it. If you're looking for 10%, uh, you could actually pay $4.60 for it. Okay. Great. Uh, the, the only cu couple of issues, I've got it at a discount to intrinsic value as well, and it's a reasonably good quality business. Um, the, the only issue that I've got is that return on equity has been declining since 2006. Um, back in 2006, it was at uh, it was about 50%, you know, close to it. Um, it's now expected to be about half that for the next few years, mm -hmm. and they have been raising money as well um, over the last couple of years. So, in fact, in 2010, they raised 20 million dollars, you know, from shareholders. So that, that's often dilutionary, um, and and as long as they raise the money and employ it at very high rates of return, that's not a problem. But you just need to be aware of it. Uh, in terms of intrinsic value. Uh, it's been rising actually. It had, a, it had a period back in 2005, 2006, 2007 where intrinsic value went up, uh, but then it went sideways for a couple of years. It's now expected to increase again, um, and the present intrinsic value I've got is $4.38, going to $4.86 next year and $5.13 the year after. Um, but just be mindful of that, that decline in return on equity. Okay, thanks for that, Roger.